This is the uh, call of meeting to order. This is the Northampton Historical Commission uh, meeting from Monday, May 21st. Thanks to all the commission members for coming so frequently on this month because of the holiday. Um, um, and the first item on the agenda is notice that the meeting may be uh, video or audio recorded. It is. It is free. Uh, the second notice is to uh, invite public comment. That generally comment for any topic that's not already on the agenda. Um, and uh, we're happy to hear from people if they want to say something. Is there any any requests for public comment? Great. Not a comment. No. Um, the next item is the approval of minutes. The minutes are distributed for uh, uh, November 27th. Um, we're uh, catching up on those. Um, anybody have any comments or is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Okay, second. Second. Any discussion? All of the Sorry, did a great job of summarizing the dam discussion. Thank yes. you. Yes. <laughs> more, like, more like they look good. <laughs> yeah. No, we're good. Is there any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor of accepting the minutes, please say aye. 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 Opposed? We'll move forward on that. Number four, the uh, review of proposed building envelope repairs at historic Hampshire County Courthouse 99 Main Street pursuant to historic preservation restriction. That's me. Hi. Hi. Good evening. I'm Todd Ford. I'm the executive director of the Hampshire Council of Governments, the owner of the building at 99 Main Street, which is the historic courthouse. And I'm very pleased to announce uh, that we have secured over $1.8 million from the state uh, through the Department of Capital Asset Management, uh, right. plus the $100,000 of the Northampton uh, CPA funds, plus an additional $10,000 from the uh, Town of Hatfield uh, CPA funds, which allows us to begin work uh, with a full restoration of the south-facing tower element uh, of the courthouse. Mm -hmm. And so that uh, is the only uh, area within the scope of work currently. The rest of the building will be handled uh, hopefully in phases uh, three and four, and we're currently working on that. So I think Sarah distributed uh, the plan set uh, to you, um, mm -hmm. and I'm glad to answer any questions. Uh, I'll just go over some of the quick highlights, because I know you have a busy agenda. Uh, so this would be a full restoration of the south-facing uh, tower and uh, the area uh, just behind uh, the tower. Uh, so really, if you're familiar with the building, it's everything before it jogs in and runs north. Um, and so we're going to be starting at the top and working our way down. Uh, obviously, waterproofing the tower. If you've been in there anytime soon, it's a very porous environment. Uh, so we'll be waterproofing the tower, full replacement of the historic terracotta roof, uh, and also a replacement of the slate roof within the limits of the scope of work. Uh, there are some additional needed repairs in phases three and four on the main roof uh, of the court. Um, but I also imagine that the uh, slate will be uh, replaced there as well. Uh, getting down to the windows, uh, so the, the only um, historically accurate windows in the building uh, that we know of, uh, there's one, uh, there's some old ones on the top floor, uh, which uh, is actually this window here is still historically accurate. And then all the windows on the top of the tower are actually historic windows. So those will be repaired to the greatest extent possible. All the other windows were added in 1973, I think, by the state uh, when they did that uh, to the to the windows. And I brought, uh, just so you see where we're going, we've been doing research on what the windows actually look like when the building uh, was built. And I have uh, two pictures. This one uh, is the oldest known picture that I know of, of the full courthouse. So this is gonna be before uh, 1908 when they did some changes uh, to the uh, finial, which I'll go into again. And then this one, the same windows, uh, but different top, uh, you'll notice. This is from after they restored the courthouse in around 1909, 1910, when they put in a fence, they added the fountain, uh, and they also changed the top of the tower. So they took off the original terracotta uh, finial uh, that went on the top, and they replaced it with a flagpole. At some point later, they removed the flagpole and actually cut it it used to go all the way through the tower to the second floor of the courthouse just to stabilize it. Uh, but I, I think they realized it was probably a, a structural mistake to put in the flagpole. Uh, and they took the flagpole out, cut it, and then put the weather vane on top of a copper finial. 
uh, which we do not believe is original. So we believe we actually have the original terracotta uh, finial, which we'll be looking to put back on once we can get all of our historic ducts in a row, make sure that, that was the uh, architect's original intent. Um, other than that, uh, complete cleaning, uh, remortaring of uh, the entire area uh, within the limits of work, uh, cleaning all the stone, uh, putting in a historically accurate colored mortar uh, to uh, shore up that part of the, part of the structure. Um, obviously, we won't be touching the stairs because we did that a couple of years ago uh, in phase one. Uh, and we hope to be starting the work uh, in very early September of this year. Are you using, um, you, uh, it sounds like you're using substantially identical material uh, whenever possible. Are you using any non-typical uh, material? Not that I'm aware of uh, yet. I think, you know, the window, the new windows will be probably the closest we would get to looking at anything non-traditional. Um, what we believe they did is they, uh, they used to be uh, pulley, but they're all operable. Uh, so we'll be going back to fully yeah, operable yeah. windows on a pulley system. Uh, we believe that they encased that um, with, uh, when they redid it in like 1974, and if we simply peel that encasement off, we think the original uh, hardware mechanisms are gonna be there to allow for the, the new windows to go in. So they're the double hung windows. Yeah. 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 yeah, except for the cool arches right. of yeah. our culture. Yeah, because that's the key thing on this is to get the appropriate mountains back in and the divided lights. And if you have, you know, an accurate historic picture, that makes a huge difference because that's one of the real glaring things with the courthouse now is the, yeah. the blank windows. Yeah. Architecturally, we call those Orphan Annie windows. <laughs> those of you who remember Little Orphan Annie with no eyeballs. <laughs> that's funny. So questions from the commission. This is just a review. We appreciate the update. Thank you. And uh, questions from members. Dylan, are you aware of any of the earlier photographs? I could check. Um, I work at the library. Oh, okay. So we might have some, but I just off the top of my head, I think they look very similar to this one. Yeah, we were looking into uh, the fountain. There's also a line item in the uh, budget to restore that uh, fountain, which again was put in 1902 or so. Um, that thing's pretty much falling apart. Uh, so we'll be doing that. Uh, those are um, stones from each of the 22 towns at the time. You're preserving those, right? Yeah. 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 We're going to put the ones that are underwater below so that they're underwater. <laughs> And and the weathering as well, which is 1920s. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we don't think the weather vane is uh, was on the original uh, plan. So at this point, we're not. Uh, although it shows in the, the schematic drawings, but at this point, I think we're leaning against putting it up um, because it was not part of the original intent of the argument. This is phase two, Todd. So what's beyond this project here? Uh, the rest of the building. So the main uh, courthouse area, the, the main area of the house is the historic courthouse. Uh, so again, it's that whole area working all the way down, uh, starting with the roof, which is badly leaking uh, in the courthouse area, uh, stabilizing the entire structure uh, down to the, the foundation. Um, and then phase four would be any money left over to do inside interior work, which is also drastically needed. Are you working with an architect on this? Yeah, Boston Bay Architects, who did phase one and also the uh, original assessment back in 2011. Did you know, I'm just, is the that's where the law library is? Is the law library? In the library? basement, yeah. It's in the basement. Yeah. So what's the, is the, is the building used for now? Uh, so the law library is in the basement, the second floor, the offices of HCG, uh, and then the third floor is leased to the state uh, for the court and the court offices. I just was curious about um, one the slate. Is that something you can match? Uh, it is something we can match. It is not something in the opinion of the architect that we can preserve. Uh, and still deal with the underlying right. layers, which are right. badly deteriorated. It's 110 years old. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's old. never been touched. Yeah, and uh, the underlying oh, light is gone. Yeah. 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 So do you think do you think that it's um, you'll just try to match the color? 
Um, well, the color, maybe, I mean, we know where all the materials came from, so we also okay. hope to match their original location. Right. I mean, it might be a different color now than what it was when right. it was put up, um, but we're out, we'll do our absolute best to match not only the original color, but the, the possible location. So it's still an active foray in that? <coughs> I believe so, but yeah, we're checking. Okay. <coughs> and the video you mentioned on the top, the terracotta, yeah. um, they're kind of these little minaretti kind of mini um, towers that are on each of the corners. Yep. Are those finials also? Yeah, but those are copper. I see. Yeah. Okay. And those are and those are intact, in place right now. Yep, and those will be restored and cleaned up. And a lot, of, a lot of the detailed copper work is badly dented from hailstorms mm -hmm. or what have you. So it will be restored to the greatest extent possible. But the, we found that what we think is the original terracotta up in the attic. Mm -hmm. Great. I want to thank you for um, the, uh, the amount of work you put into this project. I know getting the grant uh, from the state was not easy, and uh, you worked hard on this, and I think uh, you and your team deserve credit for uh, uh, working so hard to, to do a good preservation job. Thank you. Um, you're not going to spoil it by putting any electronic uh, uh, phone uh, antenna on it, are you? No, <laughs> no not, not on it. <laughs> I once explored putting one in it, but... <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, um, in, in the belfry. Yeah, we're going to see it. Yeah, good. Um, any questions from? No, I'm happy to see it. Yeah, Historians. It's, really good, the details. Yeah, really great. it's great to see so much attention being tied to the the detail. Yeah, it's a fun project. It's, I'm an yeah. urban designer by trade, so it's kind of <laughs> a fun night job for me. No, okay. So the commission will shortly, we hope be holding a preservation restriction on this building. Um, although it's not in place yet, the work won't have started by the time the restriction is in place, so we would just need a vote to approve this work, which it all qualifies as major work under the restriction, pursuant to that restriction. <coughs> and that persists, I mean, if, if um, not that a county would, but if a county, if, if, if the town within a county ever dissolved the council government, the restrictions follow the building and not the not the body. It does. Yeah. Um, well, I have, again, nothing but praise uh, for, for everything that you've done. Uh, this is uh, a very nice preservation being done sensitively. You, you're using the right materials. Um, you, you're tracking down the old parts and bits and, and um, um, doing a nice job. So um, I think it's, a, it's obviously a, uh, um, <coughs> the key building in the center of, of Northampton. Not everybody gives it uh, all of its due because uh, they're looking elsewhere, but frankly it would be a huge thing if it weren't there. And it's a not really nice piece of uh, Romanesque uh, architecture. That, uh, uh, Thank God they didn't turn it into a parking lot like the state recommended in 1956. Well, this is a, this is a far better thing. So. Um, uh, Anyway, good work, and, and thanks for the update. It's not, this is not for us to approve anything. This is just for us to... Yeah, just we, it is? I thought yeah so pursuant to the preservation restriction. Okay, I see. You will hold shortly. Do we have an update from... No, we, we bother him daily. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, any concerns regarding that? And I'll share the 50% design docs when they're complete. Good. So. Okay. Well... Um, thank you, thank you. Uh, if, if there's nothing else, then I think we'll move we forward. Yes. So we need a motion, second. So I'll, I'll move to uh, go forward with the preservation restriction. Is that right, sir? Uh, to approve the work presented pursuant to the to approve the work presented pursuant to the preservation restriction. Is there a second on that? Second. Is there a discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Thanks for your service. Keep those, but I need my book back. Oh, yes, sorry. <laughs> so, well, we thought we thought we got it. So. <laughs> for a while and see how they do. We may not, we might make them more open and 
inclusive. Okay. The next item on our agenda is um, request for local historic district certificate of appropriateness pursuant to section 195 of the Northampton Code for building renovation, uh, specifically work uh, to deck construction, window and door replacement and new lighting. Uh, Patrick and Karen Lonsway, uh, 337 Elm Street, uh, parcel 24C-045. Can I come up and join sure. us? My name is Roy Jamie uh, I represent Patrick and Karen. Yeah. I'm Pat. Welcome, welcome, yeah. and uh, look forward to hearing from you. Everyone will proceed with the permit application. Um, and some photographs of the site. Okay. We've submitted most of these. Um, this house was built in 1911, 1912. Colonial Revival is probably a Could you speak up on the part? If you could speak up, I'd appreciate it. Okay, sure. Okay. Um, so this is the Colonial Revival. It was built in 1911, 1912. Um, about a half a century later in the 1960s, the owners um, did a renovation in the back and added um, this section of building here and here, um, which really did not take into any consideration of the architecture of the time. Um, our renovation, we feel, um, is gonna bring a lot of that back, that character and architecture back to this building. So what we are proposing here is removing windows. This elevation is not seen from a public way. I have a bunch of photos here. Um, let's see right here is a, a Google Earth. This is 337, the subject property here. Uh, my first photograph was taken in the back towards the building. My second photograph was taken from the side. Uh, the third was taken from Elm Street between uh, the two buildings. Um, and that photo is this one here. And again, these photos were taken before the leaves bloomed. So you, you have a really hard time. There's a little uh, orange stake in here, which I believe you probably have photos of. And uh, that represents the back corner of the, the rear deck over here. And there's another one that you can't see in photo D, which was taken from the other side of the property um, between the two buildings. This is, this is Woodlawn here on the street. Um, and then we went over to Woodlawn and we took pictures from the sidewalk uh, over the fence. Uh, this is hard to see. Uh, this is the little bit of building that is going to be affected here. Uh, then we went across the street where somebody would be driving by. There's no sidewalk, uh, but this is where the lane of traffic would be. And you can just see that again. There's a little, a little section that's going to be seen from the street over the fence. Um, so what we're proposing is removing these two windows installing a triple uh, uh, divided light slider, which we're proposing is between the glass, with which I know is not accepted, but because it faces the back of the property and not a public way, that's what we are proposing. Uh, this window here would be removed. This would also have a slider put in, same style. Um, and on the opposite side, which I don't have a photo of, there is a casement window, which would be seen from Elm Street on this elevation, but you, you, you really just can't see it. It's like somewhere right in here behind the trees. <coughs> that window currently is a, is a casement window. And again, you know, the casements, the awnings um, that they used here just didn't fit this style architecture whatsoever. Um, so in addition to that, we're going, we're proposing a, a deck in the backyard, which uh, this photo here is the materials that we'll be using, square balusters, uh, closed um, post with a post cap and a, a post base and there's a little profile to the top and bottom rail. Um, that deck would reach pretty much across the back, you know, this whole width of the set of stairs coming here. And again, in this photo here, this orange stake that we have set up represents the top of post rail, so it's this point here. We did one on the other side, but we just couldn't get a photograph of it. I think it's really difficult to see, but it's like a little teeny little orange flag through the trees here. Um, and let's see what else, so the lighting. Okay, so the code's gonna require us to put lighting in here. So this is the, the light that's on the front of the building, which we're gonna mimic. It should be pretty easy to mimic. It's a pretty simple light fixture. Um, I don't believe it's gonna need any 
diffusers because of the amount of light it's going to emit. It's only going to have like a 40 watt bulb in it, maybe a 60 at the most. Um, and let's see, this section back up is here. This this was also added at the time, and I guess they had an apartment upstairs at one point, and that was the egress. Um, we're proposing to remove that and uh, extend the. Uh, so I don't know if you can see in the strong here, there's a little shed roof right here, which is a little shed roof right here and here. So this deck would wrap around the side, and this first floor deck here would be you know, rebuilt the same way as what we're proposing the main room deck would be. Um, let's see, there's also a steel shed, which is kind of hard to see. It's right here. It, it, there's literally no space to walk between the fence and the steel shed at this point in time and it's pretty dilapidated so we would like to take it down at some point. Um, I guess those are the, the pointers. <coughs> okay. um, to start the discussion we are guided by um, the, the, the uh, guidelines for the historic district. Obviously, are you familiar with? Yeah, I've, I've done pretty good research with the system. Great, great so, exactly. um, so let's just go uh, through the guidelines and, and, and let you respond. Um, the first one is that the addition should be constructed with the least possible loss of historic fabric and designed to be in harmony with the existing building in size, scale, massing, style, um, detail, and material. Um, so perhaps not to mimic, but to at least uh, uh, be in scale with uh, in those categories. Um, so this is, <coughs> well first let's talk about jurisdiction or capability. If this is <coughs> probably visible from from um, the side street. Yeah, from, from Woodlawn you would see um, this elevation here, sit passing on the sidewalk, and you can just see the top of the this porch here. Yeah. And the um, fence, the fence is, you plan to keep that fence? This fence is not part of 337. Okay. This is the owner lot. I think this is number. Uh, oh, I see. It's someone else's fence. Okay. Yeah. 345. So that's that's the house on the corner of um, Woodlawn and Elm right here. And their driveway enters through the side. So F and G, these are the photos that were taken from uh, those elevations. Where they, this one is okay. What would the. the Look in the lower right hand corner, the top of the um, of that uh, new of that post that, uh, on the balcony. What what's the elevation of that above the ground? Uh, it's about ten feet. Okay. Um, and how at that elevation, what is the visibility factor from Woodlawn? Um, I can't see either one of those from Woodlawn when I take these photos. This one or this one. And those are in place. Um, because we're charged with, with exercising supervision of things that are visible from the public way, but I don't want to get into regulating items that are not visible from the public way. So um, that's why I call it a jurisdictional question. Um, are, are you fairly sure about this, or should we ask for a. You can feel free to go. I, I, I have to uh, see a. a, 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 a Call it, but a, a post that would indicate uh, the height. So that yeah, I have. I think this is the this is Woodlawn, right? A story post or something. Yes. Yeah, I have. A, so, so from Woodlawn, you see you see this, and uh, at least from that vantage point on yeah. Woodlawn. Yeah, you don't even I mean. So here's your elevation. The post is down at this height. Now. Right. The reason I'm asking is this is not a this is not a a, a, a grade level deck where they used to down to. It's just a step or two above the ground. It's, it's ten feet. It's it's even with this line here. Yeah, yeah, okay. And, and you'll have to pretend that the bushes and the fence don't mm -hmm. exist. Right. Don't exist? Yes. Right. Well, because they're they're ephemeral, they could be taken right. down yes. at any time. Okay, good clarification, thank you. Um, for the next, uh, so let's, let's come back to these. Let's go through uh, for the, to remind um, <coughs> commission members. The second is that addition should be designed so the overall character of the site, the site topography, character defining site features, trees and other distinct views are retained. They shall be, to the extent feasible, located where least visible from the public view. 
and designed not to obstruct the visual integrity of the original structure, original structure, usually on the uh, rear um, elevation. Uh, an addition should be limited in size and scale so that it does not overpower the building to which it's attached. The original portion of the building and earlier additions should continue to be recognizable, except for in cases where you know the permit has been given for, for demolition. Um, uh, continue to be recognizable apart from the new addition by means of massing articulation of setbacks, trim, and ornamental detail. Uh, additions should be designed so that the primary elevations of the original building remain clearly delineated um, uh, near the end. Additions <coughs> that significantly change the proportion of the built mass to open space on the site are discouraged and additions that will detract from the overall historic character of the principal building and the site or will require the removal of a significant building or site feature will be prohibited. Um, so those are the, those are the, the elements that we're familiar with. Um, so let's not talk about materials quite yet. Let's talk about sort of the overall massing and, and um, utilization of the site. Um, and uh, I'll just ask for, for comment. Bruce, you, you have any Yeah, just expertise? taking a look at this, um, even though absent the foliage and everything, there's probably some more visibility. For the most part, you're talking about tinkering with an addition uh, to the building and not really tampering with the historic structure itself. And so just about anything could be, that you would be doing would improve that bump on the back of this building. And I think what you've done is created a little bit more of a residential architectural character as opposed to a you know, workshop or garage or something like that. Uh, I think with the, the, the massing and the detailing and all of that, it does not overwhelm the original structure at all. And in fact, you're keeping what's already there uh, it might be a different story if you were talking about starting from scratch and adding something to it. But what you're doing is sort of rescuing uh, this property from what had been done to it, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago. Um, so I, I don't have a problem with the, uh, the massing and the detailing on it. And I think that um, the fact that it is at the back of the property um, I won't get hung up with muttons that are uh, in between the glass back there. If it was the front of the building or the side of the building, you really want to create that shadow line. Uh, but I think that uh, for the amount of visibility this is going to have, uh, I think that's a decided improvement for, from what is already there. Okay. You said that the the second story. This, um, the stairs? Yes, that. Mm -hmm. That's coming off. That, that is part of the, yeah. There's further interior innovations that are going to be done upstairs, so we're going to use this for access up there so we don't have to go through the main house. And once that's completed, this will be removed. Oh, I like the courthouse. We have a, we have a three phase with this as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> can I just ask a question on the the, uh, the drawing that you have on the right hand side yes. at the top. Yep. So I see the house and then the deck. Mm -hmm. And then underneath, w what are those four? Uh, uh, they, they, yeah, okay, so. Four uh, spaces. Uh, in, this, in this architectural drawing here, we did not draw mm -hmm. all the lattice, but the underside of that deck would be completely closed in with lattice that uh, will actually match the lattice that you can't see it here. But the original porch has uh, lattice panels, for, uh, picture frame mm -hmm. lattice panels. So we're trying to pick up that detail. Mm -hmm. Can I just get a little bit closer? Sure, absolutely. Is this what was called the Silver Plath House? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was going to mention that, but this isn't where she lived. <laughs> oh, I mean, she lived in an apartment. It had nothing to do with it. Are, are you aware that the chief of police owned the house? Uh, he was the second mm -hmm. owner, and then they rented to Sylvia Plants. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and her nightstand was there to have a spill on it of the uh, nail polish remover that was there until maybe a year before you bought it, sadly. They took it out of there. Really? And they threw it away? Yes. Wow. That's I'm interesting. I'm so glad you bought it. I showed that house several products. I remember that house distinctly. But I know that I mean, Smith, Smith has a lot 
has a large sort of black collection, and the assistant curator of books has been in there, probably with the previous owner, and documented photographs because she actually, it, it was pretty much untouched, really. And she lived there in 1958, 59, and somebody we know from the library lived there in the early 60s and described it, and it was, it was as if she just left it. So anyway, it was, but it's been documented how it, because it wasn't changed, how it was permanent. Well, a lot of the renovation that, that we're doing in here, the internal renovation, we're actually restoring this whole section of the building to the original trims and uh, door heads and door heads uh, to the main house. So right now, it's just, you know, yeah, the frame sucks, uh, colonial casing with the half and show you base. <laughs> It's an interesting property, but it definitely requires some vision. Thank you. Fortunately, Roy has a lot of vision. <laughs> Did Julie Dixon live there too? No. 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 Anyway, that's an aside. <laughs> um, now, the proposal, as I understand it, is to utilize um, synthetic materials on the on the deck and, and railing. Yes. Okay. Um, and I understand the reason for that. Is there? But is there any any? comment about that we're you know, being in the district we're supposed to ask for it's about the use of traditional materials uh, and certainly between fur and some of the other materials available there are there are all alternatives to the um to plastic um do i understand you from texas i am well we look we karen and i were in texas for the last 20 years Rock only has about two months uh, available to it yeah. here in New England, and uh, other than that, it's frozen. Uh, so, uh, um, and and um, so, um, would it be possible for us to get pictures of or details of the uh, the railing that, and, or whether there, are there any thoughts about because the the, the profile on that is distinctly um, synthetic looking? Is it? You know what I mean? Okay, uh, so what, you want just more detail of it? Well, I, I, I like it. Probably going to end up being the most visible part of, of this project um, because you're going to be, be taking on this up. You're be taking off a real ugly addition, which is good. Uh, you're putting in some good windows, which match the uh, the original, and so those will kind of seamlessly fit in, um, and that's good. Um, the, the 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 surface of the deck won't be noticeable from uh, anywhere, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and the synthetic makes sense uh, for painting and durability. Um, but the um, the eye doesn't pick up profiles and 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 and, and uh, sizing on railings. Mm -hmm. It's a very as you know a very important part of colonial revival uh, period. Um, so I uh, you know just wondering if. Is that exactly the model, or could we see a model, or, or this, this, this see is the profile of that railing before? Uh, uh, well, you can go ahead on that. I can give you physical profiles. I can give you a physical cap. I can give you a physical base. Uh, I can give you a physical baluster and a cut of the bottom and top rail. Yeah, it seems to me that there is texture to it. It is, uh, you know, uh, molded along the side so that it does have a shadow on it. It's not like it's a strictly rectangular or uh, an oval shape or something like that. So to me, I think I think it would probably the have... The snow would not help in that photograph. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think it would have enough of a, a character simply because it does have a shadow line along it. So, so the examples Roy, Roy shared with me for what it's worth. I, uh, has, mm -hmm. has, so this material is not a cheap proposition by any stretch, right? So right, right. going back to something wood related, that was our first choice because we're trying to mine the budget as well. Uh, the bigger concern is what it looks like right. three, four, five years down the road yeah. and how much better this would preserve and, and, uh, and uh, hold up. I don't want it to look like this, 
Exactly. Right. Yeah. No, it, it's definitely going to look a lot better. That's much better than just a pre treated <coughs> right. wood exposed balcony. Yeah, I, I thought I had a better picture of this one. <coughs> So it's not vinyl, is it? It's PVC. Yeah, it's a, it's a kind of plastic. Yeah. Because even that, I've, I've seen the vinyl that's yeah. and it gets moldy and it's cracked and yeah. um, you know after a few years. And so I, I mean I don't know that that's such a great yeah, you know, material either. That doesn't really negate. Anybody else wants to make suits? Okay, well, again, we have to um, restrict our pretty so consideration to the yeah, that yeah. part of construction, yeah. proposed construction that's visible from the public way, or would be visible without the So um, I take it that without that gray wooden fence, a substantial amount of the deck would be, would be visible. Yeah, this would be the elevation that you would see right here. Yeah, okay. So, and without, if we look at picture F yeah. uh, from Woodlawn, right. um, that's a, taken from the public way and without the fence, um, then I think a substantial portion of wood. So, I think it's reasonable for us to consider um, the materials. And so, the, the um, you know, I asked the commission for their opinion on that. Greg, go on. Well, under most circumstances, I am not a fan of vinyl. However, I'm okay with this simply because it's, uh, it's it's not easily seen. I would expect that fence, even when it becomes dilapidated, to become renovated, if not by this owner in the future, by any owner in the future. So this project is really at the edge of our purview here. I don't I don't see this as a Big deal from our point of view. I don't, you know, I'm not a fan of bad renovations on Elm Street, believe me. I'm not a fan of that. And this is, uh, this is fine by me. Well, um, what's the treatment underneath the deck? Um, that would be a lattice, uh, lattice panels. Everything, everything's PVC. And it, it, again, it's maintenance and upkeep. We keep it looking good over years and years. Um, so the the pressure treated band joist here would be um, a white board, and then each panel would be framed in another white board, and then the panels would uh, be painted green, similar to the ones on the deck. So it'd be approximately about a six foot high. Uh, no, but it, it's more like five. Five foot high yeah. lattice. Yeah. Well, no, no, the lattice would probably be. Little less because you got the thickness of the deck and then the, the picture frame. So you might end up with about four feet of lattice showing. Okay. 52 inches. Um, one, of, one of the worst forms of, of vinyl that exists is a vinyl lattice. Mm -hmm. it, it just looks atrocious. Well, that's because it's not installed properly. And not, it also doesn't have the depth, it doesn't have the, you know, the, the, the shadow lines to it, and it, it looks god awful. Um, uh, there is you, there is available some really good products that have more depth and, and uh, uh, that are also uh, uh, very long lasting, uh, but a wood product. And um, I certainly want I want to see some sort of information about the proposed uh, lattice, whether if it's vinyl, you know, a product that has the qualities that I'm talking about. That we. I mean, I'm not choosing materials for you necessarily, but um, uh, most final lattice is, is, is very, very thin, looks terrible, and, and would be inappropriate. Um, and I, I don't think it would in, in insulation, frankly. Um, and also, it should be surrounded by appropriately dimensioned trim uh, at, at all sides and not installed wrong. Um, what we're suffering from here is, is sort of, we, none of us receive any schematics. So we're kind of going through this for the first time with you, and that's why we're uh, seems a little bit uh, um, ad hoc as we're as we're as we're looking at this thing. Um, can we get some more specifics from you on the lattice? Yeah. 
Uh, he, he should. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, how, how do you feel about this last panel? Right here? Whether yeah, whether it's installed diagonally or or um, you know, in a rectangular uh, array is, is your choice. Um, there would need to be <coughs> appropriately appropriate borders at all, as there is there Absolutely. at all, um, uh, top, bottom, and, and right and left. I think uh, that's the picture frame. That's the picture frame that you're talking about. Yeah. So in they effect, it would be yeah. bordered, and that will give you the structural um, backing that you need to keep this going. And also that there's cheap lattice and there's good lattice, and I would assume that you're getting the good stuff. Yeah, and, and the reason that you're seeing lattice ripple like that by last non salt I love. Yeah. Those panels have to be able to move freely. Yeah. They cannot be secure. Mm -hmm. Because they were they they have to be able to move freely. Yeah, yeah. They, they, I got they that. Cannot, they cannot be secure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they just have to float in there. Yeah, they slide within the yeah. picture. So there'd, there'd be a track around yeah. behind the border of white. That you see here, behind that, there's another track that we manufactured that the lattice panel actually fits in and can, can do one of these. Because whenever you see lattice uh, panels ripple, because they fixed in place. Yeah, it's a little U-shaped yep. channel. Channel. It goes all the way around and it slides and that. I told the, Roy I was going to do the lattice myself, and then I got educated on good lattice and bad lattice. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Um, I think some of us are having a little bit of a hard time picturing what this, um, the scale of this might be in its setting. Um, and I don't know if you have the capability of simulating this, but I think it would help us to make a decision about whether we feel that it's the proper scale. Materials aside, mm -hmm. I'm not being synthetic materials, either in our guidelines or um, to steer away. Uh, but I think it's the, the scale of it um, in the back of those lots, even though it's in the behind the building, I do think it will be visible uh, from Elm Street uh, from certain vantage points in front of your house. Um, you know, either, you, the one view we see is in front of 333. Um, if you're walking towards your house a little bit further down the street, yeah, I think it's going to be a little bit more visible. So. That would be, I think, really helpful to help us make a decision. Well, I, I took this photograph because I, I took several others walking down the street. This was the one that had the most exposure to the other proposal. I think that's any, and I, I can show that on. Uh, let's see here. This was taken from. What is the square footage of the um, deck? Uh, what was that? It was uh, 14 by 20, so 280 square feet. Okay, so this this uh, Google Earth map thing, it's hard to see if you want because it's so small. If you come and look close at this, you will see the deck right here with the stairs and the little wraparound deck over here. Mm -hmm. And then the yard, you can, you can see if you look close, you can see the fence. Uh, let's see, comes right through here. There's a fence right through here. There's a fence right through here, and the back of the yard is back. So this is drawn pretty much to scale and paste it on here. Um, and let's see what else I have. Another drawing down here. Um, this was off of the tax map. And it did show the addition to the original building. Um, so this is all drawn to scale. And I took this off of the Google, Google Earth map and I just traced it on here to see what your line of vision is. So this is the picture where I took it, which has the most exposure. That would be this one. And you can see the funnel walking down the, the where you're gonna, your line of vision is going to be, where you're going to see this. This one here, even though there's trees here, the line of vision is like, you, it, 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 Yeah, this was taken right off of the Google Earth map, so it's pretty much to scale. You know? So, so this little cone here is the line of vision off the sidewalk and down the street. This one here is um, from the front. This residence here, you can see where this is it just you know, there's one spot you're gonna be able to see that if it's just stopped. And when the trees are gone again, I could see this little orange flag back here in my photo barely.
if you were to go by these two exits are in the entrance to the pools at the top of the mm -hmm. post caps. Mm -hmm. two schematics out in advance and things will go faster. Um, Bruce, have you said everything you want to say? Yeah, I think so. The non-standard materials on the back of the building. Are what? Uh, the non-standard materials on the back of the building don't bother. If this was the front of the building, totally different story. Absolutely. And uh, you wouldn't even walk in the door with that proposal. Right. Because what you're doing is really making this a useful thing on the back and um, you know, working within the economics of getting the thing to, to happen. So I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Um, my concern about the back is just because it's it's mm -hmm. not well it's not on the corner, it's visible from the corner mm -hmm. if it were not a, a fence and, and um, so we have to live up to our expectations right. and consider that. Um, and um, I would want there be some confirmation through Sarah about the lattice and the, the profiles on the on the uh, the railing, so that we had absolute confirmation that it was uh, as in appearance as 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 close to the period of the house as possible. Um, the foundations of the deck will be what sauna tubes or something like that. Concrete here, so. Okay, and will those can those be limited? Uh, I mean, you any of them. Please? You won't see any of them. Yeah, okay, It'll so the top will not be visible. Okay. Yes. Um, um, and you said, and you can get those, those confirmations about materials sure. and a lot of uh, to Sarah that I would, I would probably want to see that. Um, any other conditions or, or, or concerns? Um, another another thing I would want to say to the to the commission is that part of our um, part of our, our our role is to make sure that there's no uh, permanent change to um, structures that can't be undone. And a deck, uh, while not really typical for this house, um, and and boy, you better get your 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 uh, bug spray <laughs> in in line. Um, uh, while not typical for this house, it's something that uh, is uh, 
you know, 100 years from now or 50 years from now uh, is something that is won't be a detriment if someone else wants to uh, return the house to its original uh, position. Just not that you sure, not that you won't live another 50 years, but you never know. So, um, so, um, and, and our, our our mandate is to pass the district along to to uh, future uh, folks as much um, then as it is now. Um, okay. Any, would you like to say anything? Okay. Um, okay, if there are no further uh, comments, then is there a motion to um, uh, to approve the uh, uh, the request? Yeah, I would move that we approve the design submitted subject to um, a review by staff of the balusters um, and, and, and the um, handrail and the um, lattice work to see that it does have substantial quality and texture. And if that word comes back, I think I have no problem with yeah. it. Yeah. Kind of I'm, I'm thinking what I move. Yeah. Would be roughly, you know, at least a, a quarter inch in diameter thickness of the of the lattice. It's what it normally like two inches by a quarter inch or something. Well this is multiple inch this tight lattice is open lattice. Um, tight lattice means the little diamond is much smaller. So it's much more intricate, um, and then the larger, uh, more open lattice has bigger lines. Just the spacing of the, the slats are closer together, further apart. Right, open and closing. But the dimensions of the what what we wouldn't be approving is that sort of molded lattice, mm -hmm. where it's um, it's clearly just sort of run out of a machine. It it it, it needs to look like lattice from 1911. Right, you don't want that wood slat to look like a piece of. Nor do I. So he's so telling me that each yeah. slab when it goes over the, the next piece needs to right. look like it went over the next Yes, piece. exactly. Not just one flat piece with an right. embossed right. basket we want. Right. Okay. So, okay. Um, so it's been, the motion has been made. Is there a second? Or with, with conditions, is there a second? Is there a second? Okay. Um, uh, we've had discussion. Is there any more discussion? Okay. All those in favor of approving the application, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And, uh, Abstain. And one abstention. And um, you motion passes. Thanks. So we will just get those uh, samples to the staff. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Do you want to come up and sure. talk about the pro proposed driveway reconfiguration at Historic Northampton pursuant to Historic Preservation Restriction? If you bring the police department cookies, you don't need to pick up the phone to talk to the officers. They will come out and talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> so you did not reap any direct pressure. I did not. No. From the police department. But they, they did. They said to say thank you. Okay. Very, very, very your opioids and the <laughs> <laughs> No 
opioids are the type. Yeah, those are the type. They are. Sugar. Sugar, they are drugs. Well, I don't know what's going to say. Okay, so Sarah is almost ready, so I will give her new technology. And every time I come in, it's like you can think that you should be there. I am, but I'm doing the architect's trick of rolling it up this way. It's not like a reveal that I'm going to No, no. Now, it will stay flat. Architect's trick. Yes. Are these the same? They are. They look the same, yes. Uh, well, Sarah's calling up some images and um, that will, I think, illuminate. Uh, I mean, the, the plan, you, you're all good at reading plans, but I just, I took the pictures, I made the PowerPoint, you're all here, and Sarah is now pretty much ready. If it doesn't work this way, there's another way to do it. And there, it's not critical, but um, I think photographs of help more. Okay, well, it looks really nice of you. It does look really nice of you. Does anybody park there? But for the server? No, I never park there. There is a front of the top. It's parked. Oh, because it's actually really nice. Remember carousel slide protectors? Yeah, they're getting in the meeting. They always work. They did always work. They always work. You always kept the bulbs right. He would always carry one of those big fat glass ash trays oh, yeah. to put it under so that it would be yeah. of it. Yeah, they would keep stuff. Yes, no. Hang on. Anyway. Yeah, so it's a beautiful night, so we can see the pictures afterwards. Right. All right. Let's, let's get you guys out of here. Um, so, as you'll see in the images, we've had unbelievable flooding problems mm -hmm. and so currently so our parking lot currently incorporates this entire green area everything that you see in this outline is green and so after Betty and I started I don't know it's probably six or more months into it we have a, a serious pond there that lasted a little bit more than 24 hours so uh, I, I contacted the City because they had done some work on Graves Avenue, and the assistant city engineer came down. She said to me, "Oh, you know what? I know the soil's here. They're going to handle it. You can uh, create kind of a, uh, a, a French drain with a trench, and then uh, cover it over with some of the some of the material and grow grass, and, it, and it'll function." Well, unfortunately, you know, geology is glaciers and. They're unreliable, and so although we dug a trench that was about 24 inches across and about 22 feet long and pitched uh, to a depth of about six feet, uh, filled with one and a half inch stone, and then with some filter fabric, and then we covered it with a thin lens so that it would grow grass. Incredible finding, right? It was, and part of it is just the size, and there's. You know, it's it's probably uh, a, a larger gradient than the curvature of the Earth, but um, the parking lot is pretty flat, and so um, so anyway, we had tr tr tremendous bonding. Okay, so Sarah's got some images here, so you can you can go 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 to the next one, and you can see where we were. Um, oh my yeah. God. So you get a skating party back there. Yeah. Is that because the ground is frozen, Lori? We've had this in, in uh, non-winter conditions as well. But in winter conditions, this is the, so this is just around the time of the uh, oxen pull. Mm -hmm. And when so the first year we were there, we actually changed the gate. So now we have a gate on the Graves Avenue side, which is the what side of the screen is that? The, Left our side. left hand side, right? Yeah. And so a lot of people walk back and forth between Bridge Street Cemetery. And one of the things that we're so pleased with is a lot of school children and their parents mm -hmm. are walking through. And so this all became like we could have done a little ice fishing derby after the oxen. Yeah. And so this, <clears throat> so after this happened, and it really iced up, um, 
I called the guy back in. So, so the guy, the people came in and they did the trench. It wasn't working, so I had them pull all the, the topsoil off and expose the stone. And anyway, the short version is it didn't work. It's been redone and it's still not working. It's working more effectively, but it's still not working. And <coughs> and furthermore, the parking lot is giant. It's unlined. And so historically, um, Kerry Buckley used to have two dumpsters there at the back. Mm -hmm. So the cars would park on either side and then they just leave room for the garbage truck to go in. So basically, in the redesign, we have the same number of parking spaces. We're creating a lot more uh, green space. So this whole area will then serve as, we can have the infiltration trench there, larger, more effective, um, and uh, pitched in a way that, that if we needed to have extra cars like me, Betty, Barbara, et cetera, park here, you know, we could do that. And um, so, so the parking lot was our primary motivation because it was a real safety issue for us. So I had uh, <coughs> uh, Frank Willard came through, and I've had a guy named Chuck Whittem, who some of you know. Chuck, mm -hmm. architect. Yeah, he, he um, the poor guy, he, he kind of wanted to do other more interesting building architectural things, but uh, for the last two years, I had leaned on him with respect to the parking lot. And so he did some redesigns. Um, then Nick Dines, as part of our strategic plan, did some uh, did a redesign. But Nick's was really based on just a just a plan, um, and didn't have didn't have a sense of the soil problems, the pitch problems. This sign, which is Bridge Street School, is about a foot higher. Uh, this is all basically level here. So, and then and then uh, Todd Marchevka has a, a drain here on his side. I don't know if it's just like a French drain and I don't know what happens to that water, but anyway, the great thing was, so, so with Nick's idea, it had more space for parking, but it didn't have any place for snow storage, and it didn't have any space at all for handling our stormwater. You know, it's up. What I love about this job and about working with different people is everyone comes in. And Frank came in and he said, oh, well, you know, shrink it this way. And so we're pulling it back a little bit. So everything that you see is green is currently pavement. So we can pull it back from the neighbors. Frank is going to pitch it three inches. And then we'll have the same number of parking spaces, but we'll have more green space. Then on this side, this is this is a new incursion. So this is where the historical commission really comes in. We're keeping it. This is a an oak, a red oak, and I want to. It's almost basically the edge of the crown of the tree. So it's like fi it's a minimum of 15 feet. But if we pull it this way, our our parking lot can shrink, and then. I think a real benefit for us in terms of the historic piece, maintaining our building, is that we can pull it much further back from the barn. Um, there's a possibility also that we can create a, a nicer walkway for children where we have, you know, like we, we, we line this walkway and then the kids come here and they go like that so that they're out of harm's way. That's another worry for us. But again, historical commission, so there's this little piece here that we'd be biting into that is currently long between the dash and the gray. You guys are following mm -hmm. that side. This we get. Um, and then, so I was, so uh, we signed the contract with uh, Frank, but then part B, where for those of you who, uh, Okay, so Martha never parks in our lot. Have any of you ever parked in our I lot? I mean, I have parked there once or no. twice, I think. I walked there to get my kids. Yeah. Okay. I've so waded across the ice and the pond numerous times. I parked there the other night for an yeah. event. Yeah. So one of the things that's, um, so the, in the strategic plan that Nick had recommended, and I think many of you know Nick Dines, um, 
he has suggested that we make this a, an entry exit. And as perhaps Betty shared the other night at the award ceremony, we are now, um, we've just gotten our final bid, so we're going to be developing a whole new core exhibit that will be up for a couple of years called Making It on Main Street. Uh, interactive pieces. So in addition to our regular programming, we're hoping, anticipating more visitation. And so right now, as you come out of this, it's just a 13-foot um, one-lane driveway. It's, it's really hard with the sight lines to um, turn right going into town, but it's really, really dangerous to turn left because basically once the light at Market Street, mm -hmm. turn, these folks, they are heading out of town. And if it's daylight, you can't see the lights on the headlights. Yeah. So, you know, that's a part C, I guess I would say, where we're going to, I've already talked to Carolyn Mish and I talked to Jim Nash about lining some parking spaces, but it seemed to make sense rather than just do this project to see if we could um, change this. So if you see this, so this part here with the dashed line, this is currently lawn, mm -hmm. but what we would do is we would remove everything that's green. So this little piece of green is currently green, but this curb cut we would get rid of, mm -hmm. and make, just a, one big one. make a new parking space. We have a 20 foot foot, 24 foot curb cut, oh, see. so we shift it down eight feet. Because if we took it from here, we'd take off part of the porch of Shepherd yeah. House, and so. It seems like for the for North, historic Northampton, in terms of protecting the houses, this this enables us right now. All the drainage pitches in in the front of Parsons here and here. It's very tight, and so this would enable us to change the grade in the front, have all the water move away from Parsons, mm -hmm. create a new parking spot for the city. Um, handicapped accessible here, get rid of, anyway, those are, we can just go through these images so that you can sort of see, um, so it would be this, not to look at a plan, but we would take, basically this is what would go away, this piece, and then this, which, oops, is the problem with. There we go. Um, so we get, oh, right now that's like three or four feet from the barn edge. We have a lot more room there. Uh, it would flare out a little bit, so if there were two cars passing, mm -hmm. but um, there's a complete net gain in terms of pervious, anyway. And when the school kids come to do your gardens, Third grade. Do they come through the gate? They come through they, this yeah. gate and then they just come marching up the park. Right. So this could so enable them a safe right. on the grass access to the. Yeah. Um, so, and then here's the existing curve cut beginning here, out here. 20, it's 24 feet, but yeah, it would punch right through here. So I talked to Carolyn and she didn't think it would be an issue for zoning, but. Your step one, then zoning, and DPW is the sequencing. Um, and then, and then basically, what's nice about this plan is all of this goes away, and then much of much of this goes away too, because we can, you know, create grass, and then we can take this. This will be our handicapped accessible access for when we open the Parsons house and we can just create a brick walkway coming over to this parking space. Anyway. Laurie, in the, in the back, would, um, I don't know whether it's simply the, the, the scale of the drawing. <coughs> the, uh, if somebody drives into the lot and parks towards the very back of the property, and pulls in nose to nose in as most people work. Is there an adequate space for them to back out? It looks pretty tight. 
Wait. Chuck, Chuck designed it so it's the non. I'm sure it conforms to standard. But yeah, it's okay. it's more than uh, Northampton. Okay. Northampton's minimum, and I feel like with um, although you know we want to become a set place where families come more regularly. Uh, honestly, our demographic is older people, and I guess I'm not. I think it's tricky backing up sometimes in parking lots that are tight. So we're not going to shrink it just because we can. No, but I like your ideas. I mean, giving a lot more uh, percolation space is great. But look at look at this. Like there's this. <coughs> oh, that's ridiculous. Of, yeah, uh, absolutely. Of asphalt that that's unlined and unused. Yep. So uh, let's see what other images I have here. So here's the existing curb cut. Um, and this shows basically all, all of this would go away and become grass. And then we just put a new. So this, basically this length of this section of fence disappears and that's where the driveway goes in. And once we get to this pull out, then it goes down to the 13 foot existing width. I think getting rid of the two entry points uh, that people are confused. I know when I parked there the other night, I went in through the first one, came out the other one, because I didn't realize that there were two points of entry. And so I think what you're doing is really combining them into the one, which makes a heck of a lot more sense. But, but is the one wide enough that it's 24 feet, oh, so yeah. somebody yeah. could be coming yes, in. Yes, it's, it's, it's going to be 20, 22 that's feet. What I thought, right? yeah. 24 that's to, to, to that's 24 feet. That's 24 feet here. Architecture. Yeah. Are you going to redo the asphalt, the stone dust, or still asphalt? Or like? I, I mean, Frank gave, a, gave us a quote for asphalt. Could you consider porous pavement? This is a place where cutting edge ideas always come out. And the porous pavement in the, the uh, Walden Pond in, uh, in Concord for two generations, and it has inspired DOTs across the country to do that. It's a pavement that swallows up water instead of just running off. Mm -hmm. So this isn't block. This is actual, no. this is actual pavement, it's but it's void. Yeah, it has voids in it. And does that what kind of lifespan does it? Well, there is a Long. section of 128. Long. Yeah. yeah it just requires maintenance. It has to be vacuumed because it's, it has voids in it. Uh -huh. It's an aggregate that has voids in it. So the water can percolate through and stuff gets caught in the void so it has to be vacuumed a couple of times a year. But, but like it doesn't have to be replaced contract, as much. Contract, yeah. Vacuum. It doesn't have to be replaced as much so the cost savings is probably more in the long run. I have a couple of questions about yeah. the, um, the uh, how you're dealing with the stormwater in the parking lot. So um, you mentioned that the, um, the the assistant engineer said the soils back here. Now, what did she mean by that? Is it like clay soil? And what no, is soil? no, it's okay. So right there, you're just kind of on the margin of one of the remnant deltas of the glacial lake mm -hmm. So it's really, but you know, those areas have been so manipulated. I, uh, when we dug that, uh, did the archaeological dig last year for the cistern. What was interesting, among the things that were interesting to me, is that you could see that the the manipulated soils at the top is it, probably 14 to 18 inches, mm -hmm. and it's been added as fill. In that section, uh, I, I looked at the trench, and it's it's a you know it's, it's a sandy loam, but I think based on both the cistern and and I wasn't there the, the next time that the guy dug it out, put more stone in. Uh, <coughs> I think they're hitting clay at about eight feet. And uh, you said that the trench was six feet deep that they dug? Did you mean six? Yeah, it was pitched. It was actually six feet, six foot deep trench and you filled it with compacted gravel? Yeah, with a, a one in it. One in it Should be it. larger. I think so too. Yeah, because you're getting infiltration of silt. Uh, uh, just I, filling I, it up. I it's think, like mortar going in there. I think exactly that, like that, that they, they wrap that with a filter fabric, and right. I think the fines just... Absolutely, that's what happened. It also, um, and so it sounds like what you're saying is that there's clay down there, and then also the water table is high here. I don't... Have you had other water problems around the basements, or...? Uh, 
Not really, because, or, or I would say we can't tell. Uh, this would be, Barbara can feel free to weigh in here. But because the gutters were totally rotted out, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it really mm -hmm. compromised mm -hmm. our ability to say mm -hmm. what was happening. But um, you haven't had like water standing in the basement when well you We have had nothing like that. Mm -hmm. um, and do you know if there are perimeter drains on, if around the houses at all? Uh, no, there are not. On some of the houses, there is um, a, like a thick plastic that's been covered with stone to take the water away. Uh -huh. and I, honestly, the, the most effective thing on Parsons was I bought one of those like six-foot extension tubes to yeah. add to the gutter right. that transformed our experience in, the, in the, one of the basements of Parsons. Okay. So it may not be such a problem with the water table. I'm just saying, if you've got a high water table here, it's you're still going to have problems with ponding, you know, because every time the river rises, you know, you're, you're going to get water, and then if it's it's. But it sounds like the grading plan here is to pitch it away. Correct. You said this was higher over at this end. Right. That's what I was wondering about oh. the elevation on that side. I'm, so the existing that contributes to the ponding. No, the existing, uh, so it's pretty darn level, and of course there are some uh, whole, you know, places in here that, that, that are lower. Right now it all drains to this, I'm sorry, to this point right mm -hmm. here. And this is where it begins to back up. It's this, the perk rate is, is just mm -hmm. really slow. And in fact, um, after that image was taken, and the guy came back and it had drained some, he dug it out and it it was the winter, but it took a long time for yeah. it to drain. I think it's just a super slow. Well, especially if there's clay. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. gonna be a problem. And I don't, you know, honestly, I don't know, I don't have a history of the site. Mm -hmm. So I don't know yeah. what it was like. So I would just caution you on moving ahead with an expensive project like this until you get to the bottom of that. And but don't you think that because there's so much less surface area, we're going to have... It will help, um, but again, if you've got clay and uh, you know, the water, surface water collecting in there when it's really wet, um, it will help, but it's probably not, it may not, I'm just saying it may not eliminate it, and you may have to come up with some other measure. So I will say, okay, since... Okay, since that terrible picture that you saw, we had more work done, mm -hmm. and the water has abated within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And it was a time where no matter where you drove in the city of Northampton, you would see ponding in other, in other low spots. So it's not like it was unique. Yeah. But, no, it's a... It's a huge problem, and, it, you know, and we have nowhere to go. Yeah. Right, I know. And one solution is, is to probably too expensive for you, but not, to take out the take out the pavement and, and actually put detention <coughs> uh, boxes underneath the parking lot, um, and that are concrete and, and drivable. Uh, so, you, and then you you pave over the boxes, and the water that falls off the side actually goes into these detention boxes. And, and there's large rock underneath them, um, but um, and they, they, they're precast, so it would go in fairly quickly. But I don't know about the, the cost of it. Or create detention someplace else on the property. You know, so it's. I'm we have a, already an issue where uh, the guy last year did just just what was listed in the CPA grant, which was to uh, regrade this. So all the water now behind Parsons is draining away from the house, mm -hmm. hooray, but it's draining Collecting. here. And so you're going to have pond in there. It's collecting here. Right. Again, that <coughs> lasted for 72 hours or so, but uh, huh. there, there is a ch it's a challenge. And I don't know, like, I mean, Sarah, I don't know, could we, there, there is a city drain that goes over here on Graves. I don't the city would want our stormwater going in there. It depends on the capacity of the system and where it's at. And if it has excess capacity, that's something they could potentially allow if it's if that's a line that's full. You know. So that would be something to check out. And all I'm saying is I'm working on a project in Hatfield at the old site of the old high school where they're putting a whole new park in there. 
we had to under drain all of the sidewalks there, all of them, because the water table is high and the soils are not good, and you know we had pipe running under all of those. Um, and we're about to do the same thing at the Emily Dickinson Museum because you just you know you spend all this money building these things and then they fail. Oh, do you have broken up pavement? Is the pavement broken up in that lot? No. I don't know what, what I'm and asphalt, like I'm looking at that, well, that's the driveway going on. Yeah. It's, 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 it's not, it's just gravel. It's just gravel? gravel. It's gravel. No, 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 it's, it's, it is, it's, it's asphalt. Oh, it was, no, it just looks like gravel. <laughs> um, yeah, this has been asphalted. It doesn't look like very good asphalt. <laughs> well, that's my question. Yeah. 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 But it's not, it's not, uh, and a crumble. Infiltrating system, yeah. Uh, and, and then my only other question is: I think this is a really great concept. Um, is are there historic circulation patterns on the site that you're disrupting, or you would want to somehow acknowledge in this? Mm -hmm. um, because that's part of the story, right? Exactly. And yeah. no, if anything, we're going back because. Okay. This parking lot was all put in after uh, in the 1980s, or maybe even in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. um, or it may have been put in when this extension was put on, so it could be 80s. So this used to be, for a long time, was the garden behind the park, the Shepherd House. Mm -hmm. When the shepherds were living here, this driveway came in, and then there was a loop here, mm -hmm. the garden zone. So this is all this is all new. Mm -hmm. um, in the last 35 years. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was garden. This was all the garden. So, I mean, it's what one of our board members said, oh, I'd like to plant that with broom corn. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> so, I mean, Frank Willard, I, t I talked with him because uh, about that drainage issue and he feels confident that he can design a system that will address it and I said because I showed him Nick Dine's proposal and he said he felt that that was more expensive than we needed to do so we have an addendum on the contract that if it doesn't work the only thing that we pay for would be materials um, but I guess my hope is because right now the trench is is literally over here beyond it's just this narrow thing mm -hmm. so that if we had that plus all of this grass yeah Lori, how far down is, is the permeable sand? Oh, it's a, well, they didn't, I would say it's eight feet. Eight feet. Yeah, seven, eight feet. So they didn't, like they didn't would, hit it uh, when they first dug that trench. To it seems to me like you wouldn't have to dig that far, you wouldn't have to dig eight feet over the entire green area, but you, no, but if you, if you, if if you dug yeah. part of it to, to eight feet and got to that permeable, then you would at least have somewhere for the water to go. Right now, there's a sort of a clay barrier. Um, in those, you sort of you're making soil boxes in a sense for the water, and then it fills up and yeah, it's, it's just like a tub. Yeah, yeah. Like a tub. So exactly. So and it's if, not moving laterally. But even if you can get thing. an eight foot square uh, a column down to the permeable sand, theoretically the water could at least subside downwards. Right, and I think you know, like one of my concerns the first time is that they really they they dug the trench. Then they put filter fabric, then they put the stone, mm -hmm. filter fabric on the top. Mm -hmm. So it really, it was percolating slow through that filter fabric and then the stone, and then yeah, it was just like a bathtub. It couldn't move laterally as, as easily. Anyway. I would definitely check into the stormwater situation because you know it probably wouldn't be that complicated to, it would make line that, you know, just line yeah. this with a, with a the pipe and pipe it out to death. So I don't know how hard a process that is to figure that out, but it would be certainly worth asking about. Well, we ha I mean, we have to ask them about shifting the, so you know, the, the, the key piece up here is, yeah, we're, we're, we'll shift this eight feet. Yeah. Um, so we need DPW approval for that. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the detention pockets? I haven't used them. So you, you haven't used them? I have not. Are they expensive, David? Are they what? Are they expensive? I don't know, but I mean, they're basically like um, septic 
boxes. But they're, they're sort of louvered on the side. They're made of precast concrete. You can drive on them. Um, the parking lot between Barnes and Noble and uh, Bed Bath Beyond over in the in the Hall mm -hmm. is substantially oh, on top of big detention boxes there. Um, and um, they're featured in this old house recently for, for a driveway that, that needed to be in a place, but there's a lot of new drainage that had to be uh, accommodated instead of running off onto the neighbors. And so um, it was put directly underneath the driveway. And just, they just lowered, they put heavy rock, uh, I mean, dug a trench, heavy rock, put, just dropped the boxes, just a crane on, you know, next to each other in a line and um, filtered fabric and they covered it all up and paved it over. And so now there's like this really wonderful big hollow space. Um, as a water management strategy, it's used in cities in our Europe um, to accommodate street runoff and just create great caverns underneath the city and, and it fills up and then gradually flows out. Um, but so you have a certain kind of soil type to accommodate yeah. that, right. I would assume. It's not going to go through every it, soil. It does, yeah, but it does, it does have the advantage, you're right, but it does have the advantage of being at least it's hollow so that so it the can box on top yeah, of the existing soil. Yeah, they're, they're I mean, no bottom. What I saw in, yes. in like a ring this old house was no basically the size of this table, it fills it up. a little longer, it was in two or three boxes, mm -hmm. um, right. and uh, yeah, so it could hold a lot of water. Is that what you have agreed to be done? Mm -hmm. Is there enough room here for a rain garden um, detention facility? It's fairly small. What is it about? Thirty by sixty. Looks like it. Yeah. Yeah, it looks a little small, but that. That, that was the that was the term used the first time when I talked to the assistant city engineer. She said, oh, rain garden. I thought, sounds like the soil was looking at What's your rain garden? Is it, what is your rain garden? It's like a, it's an area where water will flow and it, it kind of creates a, a wet area and usually it's planted with hydrophilic plants. Uh, plants like, that look water. Uh, Kowalski Park has some of those. Yeah. Right. They, yeah. They, they oh, more. okay. And then the water goes away. Yes. So it does, it's not retained, it's detained. That, that's the key feature. It doesn't go away. Or like the mosquito or garden. Yes, yeah. that's, yeah. uh, that's what we have Like now. the deck. Yeah. <laughs> Although, of course, actually, we don't have that now because the water does not last long enough for, for their life cycle. Anyway, but I'm happy to talk to the DPW about uh, tying in. That would be, like, a beautiful thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then B, just getting some, some costs on, on the box. Digging, digging down to the sand to at least allow a column yeah. of flow. Uh, it wouldn't have to be the whole size of the tub, but at least something to have a drain. But you think that would be over here in this grassy area, right, David? Or are well, you another, suggesting that it would be under the I area? mean, if you've got good right here, just anywhere in here, if you could create a... Anywhere where you do show a column. Maybe Bruce, Bruce is showing there. the parking lot. You can Are do you that. Are you showing the parking lot too? Just imagine a big rain barrel with no bottom to it yeah. and a grate over the top that you can drive over but made out of concrete. Okay. Just a place for water to go for a while. Mm -hmm. Which is as it, as it goes down, so, yeah. So, so you're penetrating the, the clay. Do we have to, but like for Catch basins. There's, you know, there's hoods and other things to protect yeah. the gunk and garbage. Yeah. Uh, is that is it a similar design you like would, that? So yeah, you, you would you have, have oil and you would have to clean it out once a year, uh, according to the, the city rules. I think it has to be inspected once a year, and they just take out all the nasty stuff. And so you can the green. Yeah. Take out. They're routinely done in subdivisions, and there's never right. follow-up. That's exactly. They write it down, and then, right. and, then, and then this trench eventually fills up with garbage, mm -hmm. and then it's just a straight pipe, basically. The right. stormwater comes in, and you're back where you are. Except in our ice pond neighborhood, we take care of it. Oh. The only one in town that actually doesn't. We have a contractor that comes out once a year, cleans it out, everything. We'd love to give it to the city, but they won't accept it. So this is before you because the city yeah, because holds a preservation restriction yeah. on the entirety of historic Northampton. And 
almost any change at all requires yeah. review by the commission to make sure that it's consistent with the preservation values of the site. Well, I think the preservation values are addressed to keep things as dry as possible. Right. This is an umbrella. Oh, that's good thinking. Blue tarps. A lily pond right here. <laughs> any other comments? Laurie, I think you have our, our implicit support and, and me, you've done such a wonderful job. Um, all these changes seem very well thought out and um, restrict- uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to get ideas. I mean, it really has been one of those processes where you think, do it this way, and then someone says, what about this? And you think, oh, that's a little bit better. And um, well, but I think this, for safety, this will be great. And honestly, for the buildings, the longevity of Parsons and the barn yeah. pulling this back is really, yeah. really, really beneficial. Anybody have any objections? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Can someone make a motion that this is consistent with the preservation values of the historic Northampton premises? So moved. It's been seconded. Uh, any specific discussion? I just, I just want to ask Sarah a question. Do yeah. I need to abstain because I'm on the board of the historic board camp? No, you don't have a financial interest, so no. At some point, you should get an official determination. Will this threaten your compensation from the organization? <laughs> oh, I hope not. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's, let's I see what pictures I have, though, because, you know, what is it? So make the, the driveway entrance more more noticeable for them. Yeah, yeah for People. better or worse. Uh, but I think I think it will. Um, oh, so yeah, if we can go ahead, Sarah. The next one. So this will yeah. be basically. This will all be paved. Okay. Go ahead to the next one. And then. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, anyway, basically, you you. briefly saw in the right. plans <laughs> a lot more green. Yeah. Than green. Yeah, that's great. So the motion has been made and seconded. Discussion has occurred. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Uh, the, the other thing I'll mention, which is not necessarily, I mean, it's not related to this, but um, we, we both, we've met with Louis Hasbrook and Carolyn Mish related to this project and also our hopes and plans for Parsons House, which we hope to reopen to the public in 2019. But <coughs> uh, Carolyn just wrote to me because we're hoping to open the core of the house as a museum space. Mm -hmm. But the back for our financial portfolio is to create three rooms in the back that historically were a residential slash caretaker apartment. That person used to have some upstairs. That would no longer be available. But it would be more like a Airbnb short-term rental. So right now, uh, the commercial district ends basically right here, and the cultural district begins. Mm -hmm. So Carolyn suggested really for us to, to do this kind of projects so and come into compliance, that the commercial district of the city would take the initiative with Historic Northampton's blessing to move the commercial district to include these two properties, which basically enables us to come into compliance since essentially Shepherd House is listed as residential but it's being rented as mm -hmm. office That's space. Right. That's right. So, um, and then historically there was a gift shop here attached to the barn, which also would have been out of compliance for residential. So, um, and she said, the one thing I said to her, well, did we have to worry if she, if they took the next neighbor's lot and another lot that let's say the former parsonage was demolished, could a Cumberland Farms go in and maybe this, all of you on this committee know that the standards for the downtown commercial district are actually stricter. So that I wouldn't want a CBS there or a sort of, but we have the comp, I wouldn't want to tell this kind of thing over here. So, but I know she basically assured us that with that zone change, the city would initiate, um, we would, could be in compliance and wouldn't be detrimental. So. Is that a motion for us to consider tonight? I mean, the, the change in zoning or? The I don't know how it affects, I guess, 
you're you are not the one proposing it. Yeah. So the that city would then take. Yeah, yeah I, I, when you eventually do uh, move forward with changes to the building, that's something that will have to be reviewed, mm -hmm. but not in public. Okay. I think our, our concern would be solely that of you know, whatever changes occur should increase the protection that you currently afford it and, and uh, rather than potentially decrease it. But other than that, I don't, we, we don't want this to change. So. Any other questions? I have a quick one. The, the Minuteman on Lexington Green, the statue of the Minuteman on Lexington Green uh -huh. is John Damon. Is there any, any connection? I don't know. The Damon House. It's a very old New England name. Yeah, this situate, situate Massachusetts has hundreds of Damons buried from the 1600s in their cemeteries. So. Do you want a copy of this here? Or you don't need whatever you eventually. It is now seven. Is there any, are, we, are we done with this art? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, it's now 710, so I'm going to move fairly quickly. Well, thank you all so much. Thank you very much. I didn't think I would talk to you for 40 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am going to ask for a preservation board to have a recap for the next number seven on your agenda. What is there to recap? Good Thank you. Yes, it came off beautifully. Yeah. It did. Yeah, yeah. It did a really good job. Thank you. 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 Thank they didn't, did they? No. 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 They put a tiny blurb. Well, yeah. there was an announcement. There was no, like, co yeah. you know, cover to cover. Yeah. 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 Should have. You know, arts this week uh, or, oh, something, well. or something this week. At any rate. Um, well, next time we'll hide. How the, uh, there is one follow-up, and that is that the uh, Leeds uh, group um, missed getting their, um, <coughs> their notice, and so we are planning to attend uh, their next meeting on the, when is that? 24th or no? I thought it was June 12th. How come they didn't come? They, they, they said you didn't tell them. them. They what? They said nobody you didn't tell them. them. Nobody knew them but that. Well, that's <laughs> not my role. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't, there, wasn't the project your nomination? I think it was one of the ones you nominated. I think you were on the list. Yeah. But I mean, we're, it, it just it happened. You know? it happened. I'm so overwhelmed with doing 15 hour days right yeah. now. So Aren't we all? They didn't get. They didn't get them. Uh, okay. June twelfth at seven in the lead school. <coughs> so I, I've, I've told uh, Sarah I would do that. Would anyone want to join me? Bruce, thanks. <laughs> that <was easy. laughs> I'll have to check with my social. Oh, okay. Barbara and I went and checked out their signs, so we got, we, got, we did our part. Yeah, and I just, yeah. I mean, I would, I would be delighted to come, but I just, I'm giving a talk that night, so I have to be. So, uh, I have to be. They are That's to get a my fra frail excuse. I think I'm in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and I don't want to burn anybody. Uh, is there anything else that we need to talk about as far as um, state hospital project or um, planning, uh, plan planning, preservation plan planning, um, uh, ordinance reviews, or mail? Sarah, is there anything we need to discuss tonight? Uh, I have two quick updates not on that list. Um, Council approved the um, gravestone restoration at first reading. So that should be approved uh, at second reading early in June. So that's okay. exciting. Great. Good. That's excellent. And uh, Pomeroy Terrace is officially listed on the National Register of that's Historic that's Places. Like Pomeroy Terrace. Terrace. Great. <laughs> oh, wow. Very good. It didn't take as long as that I thought. That we should be like, going to the neighborhood years. with a bunch of champagne or something. Uh, well, I know you want to go. So is the paper done? No, they have. I've just been stalking their website, so I'm the first one to know about that. But uh, property owners uh, should be getting notifications soon. Great, and there will be an event. Yeah. So that well. you know, oh, I wonder if we could get some kind of article that talked about both um, 
maybe after the council, you know, finalizes the gravestone? Because that is all taking place down there in right. Palmer, right. you know, that district. district. Right. Yeah. So it's sort of like the nomin you know, the nomination is approved, it's on the register and sort of, you know, the first phases of like restoration. Are there any community, like, good idea, any community leaders down there, the um, residents? Yeah. Yeah. Ward 3 Neighborhood yeah. Association yeah. is really involved. Yeah, yeah. 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 they're planning to be the person yeah. to be. But I think that would be more interesting than, than simply an announcement from a commission um, yeah. to go down there. And no, down. I think it would be great if I did an article on I, it. And I think Steve Strymer is planning a walk. Great. Uh, and Historic Northampton may have a oh, Ward 3 event as well. Good. They've been waiting. I think the initial nomination would have been. 43 years ago or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time. That's not going to happen again, right? So much for so long. Right. And the only thing on the um, state hospital, we could say that we're going to, there's going to be a little field trip to visit the um, fountain oh. in Taunton next week. Great. So the whole team that Martha got together for engineering, that picture. engineering how to connect the thing and what to do with it. So uh, some of us are going to go there see it. The old girl is. is yeah, it's like, I don't know, it's become a female somehow. I don't know. <laughs> and she, she's in storage in the end. Yeah. Um, so, so, anyway. Is there anything in, as far as um, um, business that we haven't, we didn't plan for that needs to be discussed now? Sorry for racing through it, but we're after yeah, hours. I know, I know it looks still early, but it's, 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 it's the summer sun. Okay, um, Sarah, is there anything that we would be remiss in, in holding off or tabling until next time? I don't think so. Okay, with that in mind, I'm going to uh, adjourn the meeting uh, at 7.15. Um, the next meeting will be towards the end of June, so um, please uh, be thinking that the meetings in July and August tend to have uh, sporadic attendance. June 20th, yes. Yeah, I will. Uh, because of summer plans, so um, next meeting is probably the last one that we count on full membership attending, if that matters to anybody for any reason. Um, so, um, other than that, I think we're adjourned. And uh, thank you very much.